Hey, Brian from Snake Bites. My snakes are hungry and it's feeding day, but not all snakes eat the same. You're watching Snake Bites. Even after 25 years of feeding snakes, I still get excited every time I see one strike and coil a rodent. Now, all snakes are carnivorous, but because they can't chew and tear their food, they have to eat their prey whole. And certainly, the size of the animal dictates the size of the prey item. But what's really interesting is how every snake has a little bit of a different personality. Now, Brooks Kings happen to be one of my favorite snakes to feed because they're just so energetic when they're really fired up. They just lunge out of the cage, they throw about eight or 10 coils, they just squeeze the rodent like you can't believe. They're probably one of the coolest snakes to feed. And I'm gonna show you an example right now. See this guy's fired up. Now remember, this is the first meal of the season, so they're not quite as energetic as they normally would be. But I think we're gonna see this guy is gonna wrap his coils up. You can see how energetic it is. It just wants to squeeze this rodent. And again, all Brooks Kings are like this. Let's go ahead and feed a few of them. Orthriophus teniura teniurus is the scientific name of which snake? A. Brazilian rainbow boa B. Brooks king snake or C. Chinese beauty rat snake Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. For some reason, Brooks Kings are just really high energy. Well, I tell you what, rat snakes are the exact same way. And oftentimes, right after I feed the Brooks Kings, I move on to the rat snakes. And this is where I typically get bit the most. You can kind of see they're already coming out to try to meet me. And once they start to realize that there's food, you wanna make sure that your hand is not in the way because trust me, they'll be just as happy to grab your finger as they are a mouse. But I absolutely love these little guys. Look at, and he doesn't hesitate whatsoever. As soon as he grabs it, he's like, I'm gonna eat this thing right now. Another sketchy rat snake to feed are these Kunisur Island or Japanese rat snakes. This happens to be an albino, and I think last year I probably got bit by this animal more times than just about any snake in the entire collection. Once it smells food, it's just on, it's ready to go. Let's see what this guy does. Those big eyes. Oh. <laughs> see that? Again, you gotta be quick because it'll grab your finger just as quick as that mouse. So I enjoy these rat snakes so much. I just love their personalities. One of the things that makes corn snakes such amazing pets is that they're typically a lot less aggressive than the rat snakes in the Brooks King. A lot of times we end up having to just put the mouse in the cage and they won't even take it out of our hands. But when they do, it's typically not nearly as aggressive and kind of crazy as those other snakes. Let's see if this corn snake will actually take it. See, they kind of just strike it and they drag it. They don't typically coil it. And the truth is, very rarely do you get bit when you handle corn snakes. Now, cow kings are kind of in between corn snakes and brooks king snakes. They're aggressive feeders, but they're not insane feeders, but they're certainly a lot more lively than, say, a corn snake, as you can see with this ghost corn cow right here. See, they'll strike a little bit, and then usually they'll just put one coil maybe on at the most and just eat it away. Again, you can still get bit by these guys because they lunge a lot, but they're not nearly as mental as brooks kings. And then there's the little pythons like spotteds and children's python, just like this children eye. They're pretty aggressive feeders, but they're nothing like those big monster 18 footers, that's for sure.
These are actually really cool snakes to feed. These are Kenyan sand boas. And as you can see, when you open up the cage, you won't see a snake in here at all, right? Well, if you notice right here in the corner, you'll see its head just barely peeking out. And these are ambush hunters. So that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna be under the sand and they're gonna be watching. And as soon as a prey comes up, they're gonna feel it hitting. They're gonna feel it hitting. And then when it gets close, bam, they nail it. There's really three ways that snakes eat. They either constrict their prey, they inject venom, or they eat their prey live. Now the majority of snakes that we work with are constrictors, and we don't work with any venomous snakes here at BHB, but we do have animals like garter snakes, hognose, indigos, and kribos that believe it or not will just eat their prey alive. Now we do feed live to some of our animals that are tricky, but we never film it. Hey, we're animal lovers and we don't take any joy in seeing an animal die and we certainly don't want to use it from an entertainment standpoint, but I do want to show you some of the snakes that don't constrict like the garter snakes. Now garter snakes in the wild are going to eat frogs, fish, worms, and even little rodents. But what's interesting is they will literally eat their prey live so they don't constrict it and they certainly don't inject any venom. You can see they just grab it and they start to eat it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And then there are snakes like my black tail Kribo. Again, they're a lot like the garter snakes where they eat their prey live. They don't constrict it or do anything. So as they're swallowing, they'll just swallow it down. But what's cool about this animal is it doesn't just eat rodents. Believe it or not, I can take a fish fillet and feed her this, which is pretty darn cool to see her eat. And she's usually a really good feeder. She gets a little bit scared at first, but we'll see what we can do. Watch this. Here she goes. Then you've got your mid-sized animals like boa constrictors. I tell you what, when these guys strike for food, they pack a lot more punch and you don't want to be on the business end of getting a bite from one of these guys. Because as you can see, they hit pretty hard. When you get into the big snakes, that's certainly when it can get the most dodgy when you're feeding them. Now most of my monsters, my 16 or 18 footers, are off of food, whether they're breeding or just shutting down for the winter. But we certainly have a few 9 or 10 foot reticulated pythons that are still pounding food. And again, you got to be careful because it can be really sketchy when you're feeding these guys. Come on, guy. I know you want it. Here he comes. He's close. Oh, you could see the power in that strike again. Can you imagine if that was my hand or my arm? Would have certainly hurt. The whole point of this show is just how cool it is to feed snakes, but they all have different personalities. Whether they gently take it out of your hand or like this reticulated python, just come around and just grab it really hard. Regardless, feeding day is always an awesome day at BHB. Wow, man, that's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty big. Mine's not that big. No, yours is kind of small. You know, it's not as big and strong as I'd like it to be. Hi, I'm Brian Barczyk. Do you suffer from reptile dysfunction? That's okay, thousands of people have RD. I can help. By following some simple practices, we'll get your snake snapping and your lizards leaping. All you have to do is watch Snake Bites TV. You'll find information all about snakes and lizards that should help you get over your little problem. Thank you, snake bites. Having reptile dysfunction is not an embarrassment. Not watching snake bites TV is. Hey Brian, what do you get if you breed a champagne pastel to a pastel? That's easy. You get 12.5% normal, 25% pastel, 12.5% champagne, 12.5% super pastel, 25% champagne pastel, and 12.5% champagne super pastel. Man, dude, I don't know how you do that in your head. World of Ball Pythons, genetic wizard.
Yeah, that's right, Ryan. We help making kinetic geniuses around the world. Alright guys, Easter is coming up and you know little kids always do Easter egg hunts where they get to find little candies and coins and stuff in their Easter eggs and they get really excited. I want to know if you could design your own Easter egg hunt, what would you put in the eggs? Personally, I would like to find $100 bills, maybe little jello shots, that'd be pretty cool. Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. After 25 years, I still get excited when I'm feeding snakes. If you guys want to follow any of my animal adventures, make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter, at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. So which snake is scientifically known as Orthriophus teniura teniurus? Well, if you guess C, Chinese beauty rat snake, you are absolutely right. Nice work. There's a lot of species of leaf-tailed gecko, but this happens to be the giant leaf-tailed gecko. It's the second largest gecko species, only second to the Leechianus. Now these guys are truly amazing, and you can certainly see why they call them leaf-tailed geckos <laughs> and they obviously have <laughs> they obviously have quite leaping abilities too